Welcome to Black People Love Paramore, a podcast where I explore the common and uncommon interests of black people in order to help us feel seen. Please rate us and write us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Five stars only because we are five star bitches or teal guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. I'm your host, Sequoia, and today joining me to chat about country music, we have award-winning journalist and BPLP fan fave, Jewel Wicker. Hello, Jewel. Hello, hello. Thank you for coming on again, per Thank usual. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we're going to dive right in. We're going to jump into country music, okay? okay. I'm going to define country music a little bit for the girlies. Very brief definition that is not inclusive at all. It's from That's Wikipedia, what I said. It's from usual, Wikipedia. Y'all. You know, right. It's I'm like, this, sure. We can go with this, sure. I want to hear it. Let's Con- hear it. It says, country, also called country and western, is a music genre originating in the southern and southwestern United States. First produced in the 1920s, country music primarily focuses on working class Americans and blue collar american life sure 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 jan yeah um the next line on wikipedia did go into african americans had a lot of lot to do with country music and all that but it was like part of a really big paragraph and i was like i'm not about to read this whole big paragraph not but just no negroes had a outsized paragraph long uh influence but however i will not be reading that oh they had a sentence in a paragraph oh the paragraph went on that to feels... talk about like uh, Irish Americans and Not a whole bunch of other shit. I was like, this is weird. Yeah. So I moved right along and, and here we are. So we know the niggas had to do with country music. We know that it started where it started. You listen to this podcast, you know what it is already. I'm assuming. So Jewel, may I ask your favorite country song? Oh, I don't know if I have a favorite song okay overall. you got a favorite artist i would say my favorite country music i do turn to lean more country pop and my favorite country artists are always women who are yeah. fed the fuck up are there men um i literally Couldn't hard for me to recall and it's yeah. funny i don't know if you know this but i covered country music primarily for the first part of my career when i lived in harrisburg I don't know why you think that Drake and uh, Yo Gotti were coming to Harrisburg, but they were not. Um, and well, so when I covered yeah, entertainment, yeah. I covered concerts, and the concerts that I covered there were Jason Aldean, Miranda Lambert, Garth Brooks, who told mm. me that I reminded him of his daughter. Mm. I was like, sure. Um, and so, nice man, very lovely. I think he meant it as a compliment. I'm going to take it. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. But, yeah, so I, I, I covered... I cover hip hop now because I'm back home in Atlanta. But when I got out of college, I covered country music and I went to a lot of country music shows and I was the black woman there all the time. And I was always like, this could go left. Wow. It could go left. Sounds Um, terrifying. But even from that, like my, yeah, I always have gravitated more towards women in country and specifically women who were burning shit down. Mm -hmm. So... Miranda Lambert is like a huge favorite of mine. She's probably my most listened. Um, also Carrie Underwood. Also, um, uh, who am I? Oh, Casey Musgraves is huge for me. I feel like she Casey. is, that's a fave of mine. So yeah, I'm younger. So I have my introduction to country is some of the like newer artists, but I would say like the women by far are my favorite. I really need to get into Miss Casey. I know that if I actually sat you would be and a fan. listen to Golden Hour, I would be into it, I'm sure. It's just, there's something so overwhelming about listening to a full album of an artist that I'm not But you don't have with. to listen to the full album. Just start somewhere. That's true. Maybe, you know, That's like you true. don't have to make yeah. yourself listen to the whole thing. I got into Casey Musgraves because she performed. I didn't know who she was, and she performed at the Grammys one year. And I mm-hmm. thought, wait a minute, I like mm-hmm. this. And so from there, I went into like listening to her more. And I think it was her very first song was Merry Go Round, I want to say. And so anyway, I got into her from there and I've just been a fan ever since. Okay. So if you had to put together a country music starter pack for a girly like me, who really doesn't listen to much country music in general who who what artists or songs Hmm. would you put in the country music starter pack i also do like pop you know i swing pop a little bit more than 
than anything You probably else. could start with somebody like Maren Morris, who is more pop than she is country. She's like country pop. Like, you probably could start somewhere like that because I think she's mm-hmm. really accessible. Um, but I say starting with Golden Hour, I say starting with Miranda Lambert, a song like, um, like Kerosene or Gunpowder and Lead is my personal favorite. Oh, she's blowing shit up for real with Kerosene and Gunpowder and Lead. Gunpowder and Lead is literally, first of all, some of the best storytelling in music that it's my all time favorite, but it's literally a song about this man slapping her and like abusing her and he goes to jail and she sits in the driveway waiting for him to come down the street after he gets out with her shotgun because she said that's gonna be the last time you put your hands on me and i know that much Mm -hmm. i bet she won't have a hand in the lyrics i'm gonna show you what little girls are made of gunpowder and lead i and i said I, I unfortunately am a fan, Miranda. Hey. I like it. I love hey. it. I do like it. So I mm-hmm. think starting um, with like song like Miranda, maybe Marin, because I said Miranda, like I said, Marin is a little more like country pop. Or but honestly, like even if you listen to like I, I'm a Daddy's Lessons stan. I was I was gonna we gonna talk about Daddy's Lessons. I'm a Daddy's too, Lessons stan. And mm-hmm. what I love about that performance. Um, that Beyonce did with the Dixie Chicks is they like put in some of the Dixie Chicks music into that mm-hmm. performance. And so I think that's a good like gateway into if you're not familiar with the Dixie Chicks or, you know, who were very polarizing in country music and made songs like Goodbye Earl and stuff like that. That was really um, saying some shit, you know. So I think that could be a good entryway into them as well, because I think they, the Dixie Chicks story is really, really fascinating to me. Okay, I'll, I'll, the only thing I really know about the Dixie Chicks is that they started off as the Dixie Chicks, and, and they then changed they to the were Chicks. The Chicks, because they're yeah, uh, they were more progressive than much of their country correct. music counterparts. Correct, yeah. they were country music darlings, and then they criticized after nine eleven the war in Iraq. Yes, and I think they were overseas when they did it. They made a kind of Period. like an offhanded comment that got filmed, and the way that all of country music said, "and we don't fuck with y'all no more." Okay. Not y'all are not American patriots. Okay. Never been that. And so a part of Beyonce, like, bringing them back on the stage was to be like, if I'm going to come back, I'm bringing back somebody that y'all, like. Period. That had legacy that y'all tried to throw away because they were saying something that y'all didn't like. So the Dixie Chicks for sure. Okay. Love that. And how do you feel about Daddy's Lessons? Like, the original version that's on the album. Did you automatically go up for it? I'm a stand. I'm a stand. First of all, you know how I feel about Lemonade. I think Lemonade is like one of my personal favorites. I'm still reworking the rankings. Every time we get a new album, I got to really sit with it and decide. Lemonade is definitely probably in my top three, at least my top four. Um, And it might be top two. Yeah. Lemonade definitely top two for me personally. Yeah. So so I, I really love Lemonade. And I think the songs where she's experimenting with other genres are my Mm -hmm. personal favorite on Lemonade. Don't Hurt Yourself is... What's my favorite Beyonce song? Don't Hurt Yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell me nothing about it. But Daddy's Lessons... Six Inch did kind of slap. Mm -hmm. But I think um, Daddy's Lessons for me was... Because that's the kind of... Again, that's the kind of country music I like. Like, I love a murder ballad. I love a Mm -hmm. scorned woman tale. Like, that's... If it ain't ain't got that in it, I'm not... I don't want to hear about you on the back porch. At all. Did somebody get shot? Then leave me alone. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> I, so daddy's lessons and the like resentment and the like aggressiveness of that song really resonated for me. And I also just think she sounds great. And so mm-hmm. when she performed that live and you added the instruments, you added the horns, the orchestra, you had the Dixie chicks. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I it was literally, doing it for you. Yes, literally when Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages came out, I listened to them and I said, that's so nice. And then I went and played Daddy's Lessons like 10 times. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. I also really liked Daddy's Lessons when it first came out. Um, you know what? That's a lie. It you definitely didn't? had to grow on me. It definitely had to grow on Why? me. Why? I am not a country music girly. And that was like... I feel like Daddy's Lessons. Is it Daddy Lessons or Daddy's Lessons? It's Daddy Lessons. I, I think. Don't know. I, I, should, I think Daddy Lessons 
it's even more country. It's more like country than this album that we just got. Maybe. I think this country, this album had, okay, this album definitely has some country songs. I, I would say it's as country as some of the music we got. I don't you know think I so? Okay. More. If that, Daddy's Lessons feels like a country song. It's Daddy Lessons. Whereas, okay, Daddy Lessons feels like a country song, whereas, what's the name of this damn album? Cowboy Carter feels like mixing genres yes but there you are know? songs to me like when i think a daughter daughter to me is like murder Ballad. yeah like that's mm-hmm. the country music that i like mm-hmm. um even when i think of like flamingo when i think of too must want it to um mm-hmm. I, there are songs on there that feel country to me yeah um now to me i would argue and i've argued this with people and i know people don't want me to I don't think 16 Carriages is that country. Yeah, it's an R&B song. That's an R&B song. Yeah. So, yeah. We, Which is I want us to be, And I like it. But I, I like do it. want us yeah. to be honest about that. It. It's not a country song. Yeah. Um. So, that's my thought there. But there are songs on here that I feel are country. Okay, got you. Yeah, Daddy Lessons definitely grew on me over time. But it took a minute. I like it in the flow of the album. But is it something that I go and seek out by itself often? No. But if I'm listening to Lemonade, I'm Mm -mm. gonna include I seek out Daddy Lessons in there. One there are two things that I love when Beyonce does. When she whacks a man and when she Mm -hmm. whacks Matthew Knows. Period. And you're telling me that there's a song where she's doing both? Mm-hmm. That's add fair. It the, add it to my faves. That's very fair. Add it yeah. to the faves list. I'm not yeah. mad. Yeah. Okay, before we dive into Cowboy Carter for real, I would like to tell y'all my favorite country songs, okay? okay or country-ish songs. Oh, Lord. Of course, we have the classic Before He Cheats by Miss Carrie Underwood. Because she meant that shit with her whole chest. I said it with her chest. And I scream it at the top of my lungs. It's one of my like car car karaoke songs. Like when I'm singing in the car. That's fair. That's one of the ones I'm going to sing. Also, Set Fire to the Rain by Adele is another one I'm going to sing. Not that that's country. That feels country to you? It's not country. It's not country. That's just another oh, carpool, okay. karaoke song. Okay. Okay. It's on the same playlist I for see. me. I love to belt those because they, sure. the, they at the top of their register. I want to hear it. Another, oh, <clears throat> no problem. <clears throat> I'm I didn't joking. mean I'm, okay, I would never okay. do that. God, okay. Who? Anyways, um, "Buckle Bunny" by Miss Tanner Adele lately has been very fun for me. Shout out Tanner, it's great. If you have not heard it, it's like uh, I don't want to again. I don't listen not to country, country music, so I don't feel like exactly. I don't want to say what is and is not country music or like what genre things really fall into. To me, it does feel like country trap. It feels like uh, Lil Nas X, Old Town Roads, country, which I, you know, I like that shit too. That was great too. But yeah, that's another one that I really like. I love Buckle Bunny, but the issue for me with Buckle Bunny is I don't care after the first verse. Okay. So I feel like the song, like, I, I love the first verse, the the switch up after the first verse every time I'm starting it over or I'm turning it off. That's fair. I understand so that's that. awkward. Yeah. Um, but I do love the, the first verse hits. I understand how you arrive there. And then I have to do a small Taylor Swift tour, a small early, early work of Taylor Swift. I pulled out three songs in particular that resonate with me. And this is the Taylor Swift episode. For those of y'all who have been waiting for one, that's all you're getting out of me. Sorry. Teardrops on my guitar. Delicious. Our song, beautiful. And 15 is beautiful as well. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And amen. Picture to burn. Do you remember Picture to Burn? No. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't deep into Taylor. I, that I was the single. It. How did it go? As far as I'm concerned, you're just another picture to burn. She had it was a popular song, and she had to change the lyrics after a few years because she was like, "Go and tell your friends that I'm obsessive and crazy. That's fine. I'll tell mine you're gay." And then everybody oh, was like, "Okay, yeah. man, please." So okay. she changed the lyrics after that, but a banger. Now we did need to that was a lot, but the, the, a banger nevertheless. Okay, I don't know that song. I don't know that I've ever heard that song, but I do remember that controversy around 
I'll tell my friends that you're gay and her changing the lyrics around that. The girl is used to just be saying any goddamn the, thing it, on song. Any and everything on the track. Any <laughs> and everything on crazy. the track. They don't give a damn. They don't give a like, damn. I'll tell my friends you're gay. Haley calling calling bitches whores and nothing more. And me. I, and I'll and listen, I'll still go up. I still go up. Sorry. I wish she would sing it. I really do wish Haley would sing it. This Sorry. is this is a tangent, but I wish Haley would sing it. She doesn't. She like puts she the gives mic it out to everybody to else. And yeah, I'm like, she lets us say it. Yeah. And I'm gonna every say time. It every time. Every time. You're I'm once sorry. A and you're nothing more. Sorry. It'll That'll never, never change. change. Mm. I feel like with country music though, country music is kind of I mean, it's with all genres. If you're a woman, if you're a black woman, like you do kind of sus- gotta suspend. Like I'm like, I'm pretty sure me and Miranda Lambert wouldn't get along one bit i'm pretty right. sure our policy she has this song called only prettier and it's like clearly a song about like republicans versus democrats and okay. it's like we're just like you only prettier um i mean that's a take sure. and i'm and it's like oh no yeah. like oh i forgot these are southern white women mm. It's mm-hmm. yeah, so I I do feel like sometimes you gotta kind of like skirt around the bullshit if you listen right. to certain. Or when music, Carrie Underwood know. came out as anti-vax or whatever. Did she? Missed it. Uh, I'm. I hope I didn't make that up. I think some at some point she like said something that was a little iffy. Sometime during the pandemic, people were like, da da da, huh? What do y'all be expecting out of people? I know. What do y'all? I just want to enjoy my little. You know what I mean? I just want to yeah. enjoy before he cheats and keep pushing. Okay. We'll move on to Cowboy Carter now. Uh, I'll start off easy. I already know the answer, but did you like it? Yes. Mm-hmm. And what I will say is that I it continues to grow on me more and more. The first few times I heard the leak. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I had yep. it 24 hours before it came out. And I sat with it maybe two or three times that day. And it was long to me. And I thought it was fine. I hate that thing. I thought it was fine. And now I feel drastically different. I like mm-hmm. love the album. There are very few songs that I would cut. It doesn't feel too long. We could cut a few songs. Like it, it, We at the peak of my, uh, my memory and my ability to pay attention. But I overwhelmingly really really like the album and songs that i was iffy about i now am obsessed with okay yeah okay what songs were you iffy about that you now switched into obsession um the one my current hyper fixation is two hands to heaven which i thought was a cute song when i heard it the first time but i didn't Mm -hmm. really stop to I was like very early into Daughter, into My Rose, into Yaya, obviously. Um, and I didn't get into the, I like Desert Eagle too, but I didn't get into um, Two Hands to Heaven and Tyrant. Like I thought mm-hmm. they were cute, but I wasn't like going hard. And mm-hmm. now that's all I listen to. Mm-hmm. Okay. So are those your favorite tracks? I was going to ask you your favorite tracks. Are those the ones? Um. Yeah, I think. See, that's hard because I feel like I named six songs. I love Daughter. That's I love I got six listed for my I love I love Daughter. I love Yaya. I love um, Two Hands to Heaven. I love um, Shoot Tyrant. I love My Rose. I would say, am I missing something? What am I missing? Oh, Desert Eagle. I would mm-hmm. say those are probably like the top ones for me. Got it. Okay. I will say I have only listened to this album in its entirety three times. So it's, I pulled out my faves, but it's, uh, these could shift at any point. American Requiem, of course. Okay. Blackbird. I really like Blackbird. I was, I like that's the one that I've like had on repeat. That's like, I, like I pulled Blackbird out and have listened to it and it's on its own. Um, two of America's Most Wanted. Damn, not I'm calling it the, the Tupac song. Two Most Wanted, Yaya, Tyrant, and Amen. And that's fair. Those are my faves. That's mm. a pretty good list. I Blackbird gave me chills, and it almost mm. made me tear up. It makes me cry. That one, yeah, that's the main one where I'm like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Now, not I my mama. Like this. 
not my mama telling me she listened to the album on Friday, last Friday when it came out. And she was like, that song Beyonce wrote, that Blackbird song? And I said, that's literally, Beyonce, that's a cover. She said, it's a cover of who? I said, Mama the Beatles. And she was like, girl, I didn't know Oh, that. was it the Beatles? I literally didn't know. I literally, Sequoia, I knew don't, it was a cover. Sequoia, Sequoia, don't piss me off. No, I'm, Paul I'm, McCartney? I'm being serious. I don't know anything about those men. Paul McCartney so, wrote the song? I don't know anything about those men. On purpose. It's funny because I was talking to another black friend who grew up in like mixed spaces, but predominantly white spaces. Mm -hmm. And I told her a couple years ago, I was like, yeah, I can promise you my family can't name five Beatles songs. And she's like, Joe, that's not true. Everybody can. And I said, babes, no, they can't. And I went from my mama to my aunt to my aunt. And I said, name five Beatles songs. And they were all like. I'm literally struggling to think of one right now at the top of my head. Hold on, hold on. My mama got Eleanor uh, Rigby. Which hey was Jude, a cheat. is that a is that a yes, Beatles that's song? Correct. That's okay. correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Eleanor Rigby. She. My mama got Eleanor Rigby, which is literally the name a cheat of your dog. Because that's the name of my damn dog. Yes. You named your dog after. Did a you Beatles not song? know where the girl got the name from? No, I thought it was named after the president's wife. Eleanor, Eleanor Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Yeah. Every day you got your way to piss me the hell off. Every day. I did. And you doing it in front that? of a microphone is crazy. I thought it was self-explanatory. <laughs> Jewel, you thought it was self like I grew up around white people, but I did my damnedest to not. <laughs> she said I did not absorb, not none absorb of that culture, too baby. much. Okay. Yeah, Eleanor Rigby is the name of a song. Okay. And you must like it. I do. I really like it. Mm-hmm. I'm no, a Beatles I know fan. Some other though. Ones. Because my old roommate, Tommy, she went through a strong Beatles phase. And so it was yeah. on all the time. I'm sure if you played some songs, would I would know. Because I went yes. through, my Beatles phase was in high school. I went through a heavy okay. Beatles phase in high school. It's a good thing you're a music journalist because you are weird. That's not you're weird. weird That's not weird. Oh, it, it, uh, uh, you know what? That's not my place. It's not weird. That's not what would you place. call? What, okay. What would you call Who it if I? not weird? A weird um, is the word usual. I would call it so wait, unusual. That's not better. Yes, it is. No, that's it's not. <laughs> yes, it's unusual. That's not the norm. Outside the of way the that I got into the Beatles is this boy I was dating broke up with me, broke my heart and was like, you should listen to the Beatles. You should get into this song called Hey Jude. I think it would help you to feel better. He told you he to told help me. you get over he him was, to listen to Hey Jude. Guess who, guess who he got the Beatles from? His new girl. Yes. Stop it. <laughs> you a motherfucking lie. Stop. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not listening to that because I know where you got it from. I'm not listening to that song. I no. And now I love it. Stop. He it. was right. He was right. He did have some points. But the trifle the nice. audacity. The, the audacity, audacity is of really you being crazy. like, my new girl is really into the Beatles and I do think that would help heal your wound. <laughs> okay. Woo! <laughs> child we must move on we must move okay yeah those are my favorite tracks that's a good list thank you i support it i don't have no i don't have no critiques of that i don't i mean i could you know what i feel like my favorite tracks generally are the not super country ones like yaya tyrant amen i don't even think those are country for real two most wanted is country blackbird is country American Requiem. Requiem? Why can't I say fucking Requiem? Requiem. Anyways, y'all know what song I'm saying. American Requiem is like somewhere in that blended category. But see, doesn't that tell you something about genres? I, Because I guess I, I've experienced the Beatles as a rock band, so I don't consider Blackbird to be country. And okay. also the Beatles are literally not even from America. They literally like... No, that's super fair. Some British people. But I guess my point is to try to say how like malleable these It is. Right. Like, we we spend yeah. too much time getting hung up on genres and it's not even about yeah. that for real. It's just it's art at the end of the day. I mean it's art uh, it's for sure a country song on this album when you hear it in the That's like, what those, I was gonna ask vocal you. vocal stylings. Like I don't know the original version, but is it like same instrumentation? So okay. the guitar is the guitar is the same, but the um the harmonies and the background mm-hmm. vocals are not there in the original. It's just Paul. Um okay. and so it's yeah, it's it doesn't have those kind of signature 
uh, harmonious, melodic kind of background vocals, which I think is what to me makes it feel more country is like mm-hmm. all of that stuff. Um, but mm-hmm. I will say, if you're not familiar with Blackbird, Paul McCartney wrote it because he was overseas watching the civil rights movement unfold and it, he, it was inspired by um, the Little Rock Nine as they were trying to integrate the school system there and it was Blackbird was about a black woman it was a, it, this historic picture of her trying to walk into the school um, and so I, it feels like a very powerful reclaiming to mm-hmm. then have a group of black women singing this song um, that definitely yeah. makes sense yeah let's talk about the CMAs of it all from American Requiem. So Beyonce went on the CMAs, what, maybe like 10 years ago at this point? It was like a really long time ago. Yeah, I feels can't like. remember. It a blur. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like a decade at this point. And I believe it's since been scrubbed from the internet the way that the crowd was reacting to her, if I'm not mistaken. The funny thing is I remember watching it and I don't even remember. I was so into the performance that I don't remember yeah. anybody looking mad. I don't doubt that they did. I don't remember did, that either. But I don't, I don't remember that either. But I'm wondering if, like, we just saw, like, a version where they weren't panning to the crowd to show that these motherfuckers look mad. Yeah. Vulture did a, a oral history that just came out in the last, like, week or so um, about that performance and about what the reaction was like in the, like, facility versus on TV. And that the mm. atmosphere, kind of the energy shift, was way more palpable in the actual auditorium than it was on television. Because I thought we were having a good time. You know what I mean? I, I guess I'm no just idea. confused. Like, is it literally because she is a black woman that the that the shift was so clear? I this is a black woman who is not a he's not historically a country artist. And is bringing the Dixie Chicks back. Oh, uh, okay. And they already wasn't fucking with the Dixie Chicks. We don't like them, and we don't, we don't claim like you. We don't even fuck with you, and we don't like them. Now we let you on the stage, which was, you should be grateful. Now we let you on the stage, and you came up here bringing the ops. Okay. That's a lot of boldness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And, I mean, stupid, but yeah, that's the thought. And she did daddy lessons there? Mm-hmm. So this wasn't 10 years ago then, because fucking... I want to say it was 2016. I want right. to say it was 2016. So eight years ago, sure. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I... What is always so funny to me, and I'm not, I'm not whacking Beyonce specifically, because I think we've all had these moments, but it's like, girl, what do you think their reaction was going to be? That is very fair. You bringing out the ops... And you kind of an outsider in the space in the first place. You know, I, like it, it is kind of, to me, that is not a surprising reaction. <laughs> That's fair. Especially for that time in America. That's super fair. Yeah. Oh, 2016, the election time. Yeah, no, that was a, it was a, oh yeah. Oh my God, we're in an election year again. When we think about, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) When we think about, um, when we think about white rage and the way that like Trump's election was a response to having a black president, like this was all going on at that time. And here you go bringing your black ass up here. Yep. To perform a song was with this somebody after we already she had was... already like done the Super Bowl. People swore it was she was militant and black as hell in the performance. Wouldn't that have been the same? Because Formation is on Lemonade, right? Yeah, Formation is on Lemonade. Yes, it would have been the same era. I don't know which came first. Okay, the Super Bowl is in February, so likely that it came first. But also think about the fact that like. Even if the Super Bowl didn't come first, the Formation album came first where she was on a sinking uh, police car. Oh. oh Talking oh, about oh. her mama yes. Louisiana Negro she noses. Did. Period. So, like, even if we hadn't gotten the Super Bowl performance, we had already gotten mm-hmm. that rhetoric. hmm What really pisses me off is the way that black people are so... Uh, like accepting of other folks that are infiltrating our things i.e a post malone when post malone first came out 
People accept. I, first of all, I, and I, I'm part of the problem. I loved White Iverson. White Iverson smacks even still to this day. But we was very quick to accept a Post Malone and welcome him into the spaces and collaborate and do all this stuff. Absolutely. White Americans are never, never as quick to accept black people in their spaces as we are to accept them in our spaces. And I'm personally tired of it. I've had they don't have to. They don't have to accept that. us. That's why. And we don't, don't have, have to accept to them either. And you're right. You're right. You're right. And we need to be more discerning. Ideally, I would love to to, to, to be more discerning. I ain't going to let White Iverson go, though. I ain't going to let it go. I'm not. You know, me I want that at my funeral. Jewel, we're not doing this again. You're actually about to piss me off. So <laughs> we move on. Go we're on. not doing this again. Thank you. Who the fuck wants a White Iverson at their funeral? I want it at like, my funeral, also, and I want people to like swag surf. Like I want the Paul Bears to, to like White Iverson to swag surf, like a like a somber, like a somber, like swag surf to my casket. And mind you, I want to be cremated, but there has to. I don't know. We got to figure it out. But I want them makes, to yeah. swag surf to my casket and carry me on out. To White Iverson. It, when please. I started balling, I was young. Saucing. And you know, I really do feel that. That lyric, when I started balling, I and was And then when you get the, like, the, ooh, like, you got the background yeah. vocals coming in. Listen. Yeah. I saw Post Malone <laughs> perform it once because I went to Me a just as a, as a fucking entertainment reporter, I've been to a lot of concerts that I'm just like, why was I there? I went to a Justin Bieber concert once and Post Malone I can opened. understand why you would be there. Sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. It was a bunch of teenage children singing home tight. It really made me uncomfortable. Um, Post Malone opened up and he performed White White Iverson and something about hearing that in the state. It was different when I saw Post Malone live. It did. I always liked Post Malone. Like I, again, I'm talking right now, but like I like Post Malone generally. I was like, oh shit, this man's talented. Wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. I'm a fan. Yeah, I was taken I'm aback. Sorry. I was at Rolling Loud. I'm not Rolling Loud. I've never been to Rolling Loud, please. I was at Tyler the Creator's Festival, whatever that's called. I can't can't vlog. Yeah. And, yeah. And he was there. And I was like, I guess I'll stay for Post Malone's performance. Smacked. Eight. I was shocked. I do think we've, as a community, become less impressed or less easily impressed. Like I think about the reception of Justin Timberlake now versus what it used to be. Oh, and like when he God. gets up there and he busts his little move and we'd be like, why do you look, I mean, part of it is he is getting older, but like whenever he gets up and dances now, we're like, did we used to say you could dance? Like right. what are you doing? Like no, I really it do just has that. not aged well. And that's not like, is he talented? Yes. Could he dance? Yes. Could he sing? Yes. Did he have good music? Although I would argue that some like I went back and listened to Future Sex Love songs. It don't age as well as we think it aged. That's but, fair. Um, 2020 experience is still you 20 know, now. Still do what yeah. Now do. when we get to 2020 yeah. experience, I, mm-hmm. unfortunately we're gonna have to hit play. But um, <laughs> but yeah. So I I think we're more. I think we're we still handing out tickets to the to the cookout but we are a little more discerning about it you know and i like i'm not mad about that you're not wrong you're not wrong we are still giving out cookout Which tickets. I feel like we would stop giving he tickets yeah none no entrance. i think that we could wrap it up no entrance Mm-mm. thank you, you for your allyship and support you bought the baked beans but you will not you know get to mean? partake maybe she was born with it if you wasn't born with it i don't know what to tell you. you gotta go yeah no i definitely feel that um what other song do i want to talk about oh american requiem and yaya seem very prince coded to me which make me love them a little bit more that's fair i saw that you sent me a tiktok of i think it was shaheem and he listed oh. <laughs> the signs uh which which song from the album would be which sign and he said yaya was for gemini and I definitely feel that as Prince being a Gemini too. I'm like, this is so, it. it's Yaya, so Prince, it's so Gemini coded. Yaya gives me Tina, gives me Tina yes, Turner. Definitely, um, definitely, real bad. I am, I, so I don't know if I ever told you this, but I got a music business certificate from Berkeley College of Music a few years ago. You know, I don't like here, to, here you whatever. Go. With anyway, some, with some new shit fun that fact. I don't know about you. Fun that's fact. That's crazy as hell. Um, But anyway, and I remember I, w- I only bring it up because I was taking this like class about the history of music, whatever, rock and roll, da, 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 da. And it used to annoy the hell out of me because they would be like, and then there was Tina Turner. And also, and we would just like focus on like Bruce Springsteen and the Beatles and shit. And I was just like, nice. 
lovely. Stop. But it always, they always presented the information as if we know you don't know about this black artist. So we're going to educate you just a little bit, but not too much. But like we, they always assumed a deep knowledge of these like white rock gods. And I was like, girl, I don't know him. Berkeley school of music. They're doing shit like this. College school of music. I took it online, but yeah, like they always, they assumed this like knowledge. It was like, yeah. So we know that, you know, the basics we're going to jump into it. And I was like, well, actually I don't. No I shade. Don't. Nothing about a Bruce Springsteen. What I okay. know about white musicians, I had to find out on my own through MySpace and Google, baby. My mama was Very not much. playing that. No. You know? And so it always annoyed me and it made me go harder into my like learning about the legacy of black people. Mm-hmm. in rock and roll and like mm-hmm. early genres anyway it very much gives tina turner and how iconic oh my god when i think about her days of like her early days performing with ike and it, she was just so electric and i think yaya really gives live energy even though it, it is really recorded does. And yes. it reminds me of that, but then it also reminds me of this performance Beyonce did for like it was it was like Grammy honors or something, and they were honoring Stevie Wonder, and she performed um, one of his songs. And gosh, I know the, I know the name of the song, but I can't remember it right now. Um, and she performed that song, and when I tell you, it was electric. Mm-hmm. It was so good, and it had some of the same intonations and like. Um, yeah, like this, a lot of that same energy is in Yaya, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, I love it because I go back and watch that performance all the time, and yeah, so that it Stevie and and Tina and all of these like icons, it just really reminds me of them. Hmm. I definitely feel that. I I guess I was under the impression that everybody knew Tina Turner, like that everybody was pretty familiar with Tina Turner. And that's not true, huh? They just talked. It was just a. I don't know how to describe it. It's it just was an othering that I hadn't really I, no Tino shade. I feel like them people should have been other, not Tino. You know what I'm saying? Like I, not much. the not the not the black girlies. And so I it was just interesting to me because I feel like there are times, especially me as a person who grew up in Atlanta in a predominantly black neighborhood, I was always we were always the center. Cause who was going to mm-hmm. decenter us. Mm-hmm. And so whenever I had to go into like, especially like in my early twenties, like fresh out of high school, college, whenever I would go into predominantly white spaces and realize that they thought white people were the center, it always threw me off. Cause I was like, yes. well, for who? Why, why do you think that? Where, why would you think who that I know? That? Why would you think I know him? Where would I have known him from? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Iconic for who, you know? And, this is as somebody who loves all artists and who loves all genres and who Sequoia just called weird 20 minutes ago for knowing shit. But like, <laughs> you know, like you need to stop, ex- you need to stop assuming that this was everybody's like, everybody was in- brought up under this music. Cause they were not. Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely feel that too. I'm like, uh, again, our experiences are different in that I did grow up in the white spaces and stuff. And I feel like my form of rebellion was proudly being like, Nope. I ain't listening today. Never heard of it. Nope, can't name a Beatles song. Anything else? That's what the fuck I thought, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, that centering also pisses me off. Yeah, it just really, it it was something that I hadn't really thought about until then. And then, you know, I had to be the black girl in the class. Whenever it was like, write a paper on this, write a paper on that, I was always going to tell you what the black people did. Definitely. I was always going to tell you about the black artist who, you know, was breaking barriers and who was making songs that were the you know it, it goes into like when I did that that Spotify um mm. when I did that Spotify exhibit and it's like let's talk about the black artists who were making the song like Arma Franklin Aretha Franklin's sister made um Janis Joplin take a look uh take another little piece of my heart now baby break it I don't know I can't remember songs titles now mm. right now um sh- Arma Franklin, a black lady, Aretha Franklin's sister, made that song before Janis Joplin made it famous. Wow, the like, things you just really never know. Yes, They're and so, so it, it and it there. I I had this book that was talking about how the Beatles, um, the Rolling Stones, all of these like artists were going to like Memphis and were going to all of these like predominantly black music cities and and really taking a lot of their inspiration from and working with black artists <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So we cannot and talk about the their music and how iconic their music is without understanding the ways in which black artists were influencing them as artists. Very much that. Very much that. Speaking of, I feel like this is a good transition into Miss Dolly. Miss Dolly, who was vocal about her influences being black often. Appreciate you, Dolly. How do we feel about the Jolene? I, I've seen a lot of online discourse from a lot of different angles about the Jolene remake or cover. I, I feel like I find it hard to call it a cover because it's not a cover. It's just a remake. Um, yeah, how do we feel about it? I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. like it. Mm-hmm. I'm okay if you like it, but I don't like it. Uh, I feel mostly indifferent about it, TBH. I didn't feel particularly strong about original Jolene. I oh, don't wait feel now. strong about new Jolene. That's wrong. Sure. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to be that. Okay. I feel... <laughs> now, we talked about somebody who did the damn Jolene cover. It's Miley Cyrus, and we should have left it the hell alone after she did it. Okay? Because she ate that oh my damn. God. I saw a video of Miley talking about, Jolene, you fucking slut. <laughs> That was back when Miley was cover. trying to, it was like post, it was like post Disney when Miley was trying to show that she could give vocals. She wasn't just a fun time girl yeah. and she was doing a lot of acoustic covers and she did that cover of Jolene and like talented girl, a very yeah. vocals. Okay. Um, I don't like it. I don't. Mm-hmm. A lot of people feel the same. It's not that deep to me. Like, I'm not going to argue with y'all about it. We really don't have to get into the, like, intricacies of the lyrics. We don't have to get into, like, rage being a form of insecurity or what she talking about herself or what she talking about Mama Tina. I don't care. I just don't like it. Right. Bottom line is you just didn't like it. It didn't land for me. I saw somebody online, and this is where, obviously, online just gets exhausting. Like, I feel like we really have to go outside and touch grass. Somebody online was saying that the only reason that we feel a way about it about the way that Beyonce changed Jolene is because it's too black now. And I was like, da 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 da. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue y'all about so. it. That's like when y'all tried to convince me that that man that is now convicted for domestic violence, uh, that we didn't like him because we was racist. And I just said he wasn't cute. And now here y'all go tell him no, uh, Jonathan Majors. And now here y'all oh. go trying to say that I was racist because I said the man wasn't cute. Plus one, plus one, same shit. I said, no, I don't find Jonathan And now y'all out here being like, and that's because you don't like predominantly black features. Okay. Yep. That, I'm not I, gonna I got argue the exact about same thing too. I was like, y'all, the man's just not cute to me. I don't know what else to tell y'all. I'm so and I'm sorry. not going to argue with you about it. You're not going to get feel bad about me it. being anti-black or. You see my man, my man, my man. He black. There's nothing ambiguous I'm about I'm not it. getting into black features and European features, which you see on my face. I said I'm the man not. wasn't cute, and I stand by that. And, and I stand by and I'd say it again. Now what? Yeah. And here y'all go trying to live out y'all civil rights fantasies through this man, and he and now y'all mad because he uh, trying to have his wife be like Coretta. Leave me alone. Hmm. 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 Anyways, Leave me alone. So back yeah, to the that's, Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Of it. Did you like Miley's little it. feature? Mm-hmm. I loved it. I mm-hmm. loved it. That I think one did have is... to grow on me. I didn't really? Like no. Yeah. I wasn't into it at first. I thought something about the blending of their their voices. I just didn't care for. Are you serious? But as um, but as I've like listened to it and acclimated to, I will I will say I start from a place with Miley that is different than than most people that I know. I start from a much. I I don't I don't see the vision as clearly as everybody else does vocal wise. Um, but I also, I feel this, I have unpopular opinions about voices often, about the actual voice of a person often. So that's neither here nor there. But I felt like she was throwing me off a little bit. But I've since come around and I really like the song. And it's really sweet too. I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. That one starts to make me tear up too after a little bit. We love a lesbian old a romantic tale. That's oh, really what it's about. That the- that is- Oh. Please go listen. To, look at the lyrics, because everybody keeps saying I, that's about my bestie, and I'm like, I thought it was about your. I thought it was bestie. Let's let me pull up the lyrics while we talking, because I'm. I want you to know that y'all need to stop. Don't dedicate that to me. Don't dedicate that's, that to me. That's crazy. So don't Too put that much. on your both birthday post like I was planning to. Okay, Unless you're trying to send, send me a message, and then I'm a Tyler the cr- Creator. <laughs> <laughs> Not you would Tyler the Creator me. That's nuts. <laughs> That is crazy that you would do that to me. <laughs> um, but I think their I think their vocals blend so well together, and I think there's a Beyonce like 
so often is known for the power of her vocals, but I think she really yeah. showed a lot of restraint in this mm. song. And I think she really matched Miley's voice a lot in this song. I think it's beautiful. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think that's a timeless song. I mm-hmm. really do. It, yeah, it does. It does give timeless. I really like it now. It really did have to grow on me, but I like it now. It's a good one. Congratulations, Miley, because some people didn't make it. Where's Lady Gaga? Sorry, the, continue. Uh, the lyrics. Making waves in the wind with my empty hand. My other hand on you. I heard that. I, it's I, been I, a I while since all... It's been a while since I haven't tried to pull away, but it's time for something new. That's just, you avoid it. I'm, a, I'm not going to be avoiding no more. I'm going to be communicative. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how I took it. So. Okay. I'm going to put it on your birthday post anyways. I'm going to put it on your well, birthday post. Well, you do post. what you feel is best and with that's We'll go from there. <laughs> <laughs> where's Lady Gaga? We, we we need to wrap up shortly. But where the <laughs> hell is Lady Gaga? That's what I need to know. Y'all got to move on from Steph. No, He's, I don't want to. I don't on. want to. I want somebody are... to answer for that. Who's that? You... Who's to blame? Are where y'all mad at each other? Where did you want her to be? Because it seems like the album is complete. So where did you want Lady Gaga to be? I don't give a fuck where she was going to be. She needed to be in there somewhere. It was ample opportunity. It's 27 tracks on this motherfucker. She could have got a, she could have got an interlude. The interlude. Post Malone is on the album. (laughs) (laughs) Why is Lady Gaga not on the album? Where is she? You said, I'm sorry. If Post made the cut. It's egregious. And, And Shabuzi is on there. I don't know him. So she where the under fu- twice. He on her twice. Where the fuck is Stephanie Germanata? Where is she? She could have gave a little doo wop bop. A little doo wop bop. You think they hate each other? No, I just think she's not on the album. I think y'all are dragging it. I think they hate each other because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make maybe, any sense. Maybe Gaga gonna be on Act Three. On the rock one? This would be the one for her to be on. Why would she be on the rock one? Gaga don't make no damn rock music. She made Joanne. No, I don't like that you're not as upset as I am about this. I am, this is upsetting. I me. am like, it would have been nice for us to have a reunion of, of Gaga and Beyonce. But honestly, that's as far as my, and, I, and I'm moving on. Like, I'm not mad about it, no. And y'all's the one that said part one. We didn't make that up. When y'all did telephone, y'all's the one that said part one. Okay, so where's she part also two? said, put it in a love song with Alicia Keys and then never put the video out. We know the lady We lied. didn't want nothing from Alicia she Keys. She also... <laughs> Y'all got to stop never that, lady. that. That lady didn't do nothing to y'all. She also said uh, re- Renaissance teaser, music video teaser, or whatever the hell, and then proceeded to not put nothing else out visually. Somebody, she needs, lies. To make a, somebody needs to make a Beyonce lie compilation Beyonce like they lies. do SZA. We, the way, we, they the way we talk about SZA, we might want to start to look we at Beyonce and the untruth at she's telling. Because it's not adding up. Okay, I've had enough. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I've had enough. Um... That's, I don't really have anything else. I don't really have anything else. I like the album overall. It's a very warm feeling. It feels nostalgic, and I don't know why because I didn't listen to country music growing up, but it has a certain, maybe that is like some it's epigenetic shit album. or some genetic shit. You know, like it runs down my veins because my family's from Alabama. Maybe that's the thing. You know what I mean? So I just naturally feel at home when I hear Nothing it. Nothing else Southern runs down your veins, so I'm going to say that's, that's a damn that. lie. That's untrue. That's a lie. I cook. I cook like I'm Southern. I didn't eat five green tomatoes with the best of it. Okay. Sequoia had chitlins one time, and now all of a sudden she just such a southern girl. I have early. chitlins regularly. I know, and that's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, child, that's it. That's all I got for this episode. Jewel, can you let them know where they can find you online or any last thoughts that you have? Do you would like anything else? No, I think I'm still trying to figure out where the album ranks on my favorite Beyonce albums. Um, but overall, I think it's a really great album. I do agree it's not a country album, it's a Beyonce album. But I think it's really solid, and I also feel like this is the type of album that, like, she she gives that that note about not winning an album of the year in what song is that? Sweet but sweet honey bucket. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel like she says AOTY didn't win. Some some took that shit on the chin, came back and fucked up fucked up the pen. Yep. And I feel like she's cl- like somebody said that's a line designed to age poorly and I agree with that I think the streaming numbers on this album and the way that like people who have never listened to Beyonce like think she got 85% new listeners from this album yep. on Spotify like 
this is one of, and it, with the feature Stevie Wonder, Dolly Parton, Linda Martell, like with the features and all of this, this is the type of shit that the Recording Academy eats up. Um, I'm not going to put my eggs in the Recording Academy, bas- Academy basket because they trifling every single year. Every uh, single and year. they lie every single year and they play. Every single but year. if they are going to not play in Beyonce's face anytime, it would be this for an year. album like this. Yeah. Okay. And if they don't fuck with her now? I think Beyonce need to move on. That's my thought. But. I can't tell her what to do. That's her they life. They can motherfucking choke. If they don't fuck with her now, they I can I think choke. Beyonce need to stop trying to impress them people. I don't know if she is trying to impress them. I don't know. What y'all think Act 3 going to be? I really do think it's going to be a rock album. I hope so. And we would love Get to see Jack White one on Miss the line. Haley Williams. Get Jack White on the line right now. Jack White? He already did. She already, she, she already got something Call him. him. She don't need nothing else for him. Call him back. Get Haley. Willow on the phone Haley. right now. Get ready, babe. We got stuff coming up. Get ready, babe. We got stuff coming up, okay? Anyways, you can find me across all social media platforms at BPLP Pod. You can email me at blackpeoplelovefairmore at gmail.com with hate mail, topic recommendations, et cetera, Don't send et cetera. No hate mail. You're welcome to send hate mail. Mm-mm. I can't promise that I won't send hate mail back, but you're welcome okay. to send hate mail. Um yeah that's it jewel let them know any projects you have going on anything you would like to tell them to close up social media is at jewel wicker show across platforms and whatever i'm working on i usually drop it there and her newsletter is really good so oh, thank you jewelwicker.substack.com mm-hmm. and whatever she's working on she'll drop it there too so i do that's true okay bye y'all